Jimmy, a lot of people are describing this generation as the golden generation, your generation with yourself, Borg, McEnroe, Lendl, Gerolitis, I mean, so many great players. Does that, do you take offense to that, or do you, you see why people view this generation in such high regard? Listen, we did what we were able to do back when we were able to do it. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm too old, Borg's been away too long, McEnroe's up in the booth too long now. Uh, Lind Lindell sitting in the stands and, and, uh, and coaching Murray. Nastasi is living uh, in Romania. I mean, Gerolitis is no longer with us. And, and so, you know, what are we supposed to do? Come out and, and say, wait a minute, we can compete now? We can't do it, you know, but we did it pretty darn good when we were doing it. And, and I think that uh, because we started it all, and that generation really did start it all because it wasn't just one guy. It, it was it was it was everybody that uh, that was able to have their own personality and their own way of playing, that that really created the interest and in, and in, in, uh, the boom in tennis. Now, if this is the the golden generation, I'm old school anyway, Justin. I like those days. I like the music from that era. I like the rivalries from that era. I like playing tennis in that era. Would I like to play now? Sure, I would, but I don't want to play now at 60. You know, and I can't retro back to, you know, to 25. So, you know, but, uh, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm not one of those guys that, that looks out and says, ah, what are you talking about? This, you know, I'm, I don't really care. You know, I mean, to be honest with you, I don't really care. You know, I, I don't care if I'm here. I don't, I'd rather be in Santa Barbara with my family. I, you know, and, and I, I, my career has been what it was. And, and to sit down here with you, and, and to, to even talk about it, it's almost, it's been so long, it's almost like I haven't even played, you know, but to, you know, to come here and to be around this, it kind of brings back some memories and, and good memories and bad, don't get me wrong, it's not all been perfect, but it, but it, uh, it you know, it's in my blood and, and to come and see, to see my friends and to be around and to see what this, this has become since, since uh, 78 when it first came here, it's, a, it's an unbelievable thing what has happened in tennis and, and how it happened. Now, who did that? You know, I didn't do that. You, did, you were a huge part of it. Well, I was, okay, I was a big part of it, but it started well before me, you know, and, and, and I know a lot about went on, what went on before me, Justin, and I know you do too, with what those guys went through to, to create interest in tennis and to get people to come and watch them and how, just how great they were, you know. But I came along at the right time when people were looking to grab onto something else that was more than country club tennis. And, and if they grabbed onto me and wanted, and wanted me to be a big part of that, I, I, you know, thank you, I appreciate that. And, and, uh, and I had fun doing it too. But you know, it was, uh, tennis is what it's become and, and where it is. And you can never fight against what's going on and what's hot now. You know, what, what's hot is it's in music, it's the same thing. So, but eventually you're going to get out of this era and you're going to look back and you're going to see just, you know, and, and have time to, to make a decision on it. You know, but it's going to take a while. So that's when the real uh, reports that come out. I mean, you're not going to say it, so I'll say it. I came up coming to this tournament since I was eight years old here at the U.S. Open. And in all due respect, Billie Jean King was an incredible humanitarian, what she did for the sport and what she did for women's rights in this, this world. Arthur Ashe was an incredible person and an amazing player. But this U.S. Open, this stadium, this facility was built on your blood, sweat, tears, and passion. When you come back here, do you feel like that that should be acknowledged more readily? Because I do. I'm not going to make. I'm not going to put words in your mouth. No. I just want you. I do, and a lot of the players in my generation do, and a lot of fans. These are our people out here, and these are people that wear their hearts on their sleeves and identify with you. And everything that you did to make this tournament what it is, I believe, should be more readily acknowledged. Well, I, you you say that, Justin. That, I mean, you know, I, I I'm not. I'm not looking for any of that. I, I'm really not. And, and you know, I've been, you know, anti-establishment my whole career, and and, uh, and and I'm happy that way. And I mean, you know, the, it's the Arthur Ashe Stadium. It's the Billie Jean Billie Jean King Tennis Center, and and uh, rightfully so. You know, what I did here. You know, this this place was built on on uh, the skin of American players. Yeah, and not just in my generation, you know, with, uh, it was me and Mac, and then it went on to, you know, with all the guys that I came up with, Vitas and Stockton and all those guys, and then it went to the Sampras, Agassi, Courier generation, you know, but this, this, is, a, this is American, you know, American built. 
and and you know for 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 me to to, to have been able to play here and, and to to do what I did here, I mean what 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 goes on after that is not my choice, you know and, and uh, you know I'm I'm I've done my thing, and I kind of stuttering here a little bit only because, you know I can I can say that you know I've done what I've done. What am I supposed to do, you know where am I supposed to go with that, and uh, it's not my choice. So um, you know I was happy to do what I what I was able to do here and to play the kind of tennis I was. And, and to sit here and, and to be able to talk about it uh, like this with you is, is, is a pleasure because it, it kind of brings back memories to me and, and allows me to look back and say, all right, that's kind of cool that that happened. But, you know, to, to have a court named after me, I mean, really, yeah, that's not really what I got in the game for. Well, you talked about memories. We can't go through this without going through the memories of the run in 1990. And I heard the year before that you were walking the grounds and you said that if I ever get back here, I will make this place rock. And that summer in 1990, well, <laughs> this place, if it had a roof, that's inside it information. It, 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 it is that? inside information, <laughs> and that's the world I, I delve into because I have so much respect that I want to actually bring that out and, and let the viewers and the fans know how much passion you put into it. But if there was a roof, you would have blown the roof off. Walk us through that run in 90. And, and where did you? get the energy and self-belief to make a run at that stage of your career? Well, you know, first of all, I, I've said it many times that that was the best 11 days of my career. And, and uh, that was, I think that's pretty good for me to say, uh, and I didn't win the tournament, you know, but, but what, what that did uh, for those 11 days, Justin, was, was it gave me the sound that, that I always wanted and expected from the crowd. You know, they were no longer just 20,000 fans. Uh, they were, they were 20,000 crazy fans. That, that wanted to push somebody further than they've ever been pushed before and have them respond. And I was willing to do it. Where'd I, where'd I get the energy from that? I, you know, I had a debt to pay. You know, I, I was out for, for a year with a wrist injury and, and had reconstructive wrist surgery, came back as a beginner in tennis. You know, I started off as a beginner when I, once my wrist was uh, out, of, out of the cast. And then to get back in and to play the tournaments, I was almost treated as a newcomer to the game. Not Jimmy Connors, five-time U.S. Open champion, two-time Wimbledon champion, whatever, but, but as a newcomer to the game. Well, you've been out for a year, you know. Well, we'll see if we can give you a wild card kind of thing. And so, you know, I'm saying, really? You know, it, it's only taken them that long to forget? But, but, you know, it is. It's what's hot is hot at the time. And, you know, I'd been gone for a year and never expected to play again. So I had a debt to pay. And, and my debt to, to that was to, you know, I always had to find a reason to, to, to go out and, and to play the kind of tennis that I wanted to. If that was as good a reason as any, was to, to get back into a position to show that I was still a force in tennis. And through the summer, I had a mediocre summer playing in the French and, and Wimbledon. I got to the third round of both, but uh, it was okay, but I got, got a few matches in. But my summer was what really made it because I, I got a lot of practice and, and matches playing team tennis. And so I was able to work on my game and get my game into a position of, of where I thought I was in the kind of shape that I could last and I was playing the right way. But I did say that. I said if I could get stuck in this tournament, I'd, I'd make this place rock. And, and I, I had started off having a great match with Patrick McEnroe. And, and I thought it would take me a match or two or three maybe to get stuck in the tournament. It, I was wrong. It took me one match. You know, and, and that got me stuck in there to the way that I felt, geez, if I can come back and win that match, you know, I've got an opportunity here, and, and I took full advantage of it. When you look at the elite generation you competed against, Lendl, Borg, McEnroe, which of those guys did you respect the most? Well, I had more than that. I had Ed Berg, I had Becker, yeah. I had Vlander, I had... Uh, yeah, you transcended a bunch of generations. Right, yeah, you know, you I was playing when Pete was out there. Courier yeah. beat me in 91 here. Yeah. So, I mean, my generation, you know, my, or my spanning of generations yeah. was, was quite, quite something. And, you know, and, and uh, you know, but I look at the guys that I had my real rivalries with, you know, Mac for sure, and, and uh, uh, Borg and, and Lendl and guys like that. That was my generation. But uh, it was, uh, which one did I respect the most? I respected them all uh, in, in some way or another. Uh, if, if not, it would have been very difficult for me to go out and compete against them. Uh, I, I respect. So you had a tougher time competing against players that you didn't respect. I mean, if you respected them more, it enabled you to lift your game more. Uh, I, well, sure. You know, the the, the tougher they were going to make it on me, the, the the more I had to respect it because I knew what was coming. 
and, and I knew where I had to go with my game. You know, I, I, I went out on the court with the understanding that I was going to have to play to a certain level. Uh, and, and that's the level I tried to reach every time. Some guys pushed me beyond that. Not everybody, you know, and just like everybody didn't push Mac to, you know, beyond that. But the, the guys who pushed me beyond that, I always had to have something left. I hope I had something left, you know, where I could go further. You know, but sometimes that was over the 100% mark, you know, but I was willing to give that. You know, so, so the, re, but the respect I had, I, I respected all players for what they had to offer. It's just some I respected more. Who would you like more, the most? Well, I, I, you know, Nastasi was one of my best friends, uh, you know, and, and uh, he, he kind of took me from the beginning and uh, under his wing and, and kind of g gave me an education around tennis when I was 15, 16 years old. And, you know, good or bad, you know, even to this day, we're good friends. But uh, not a lot of people know that you guys also, you won the U.S. Open doubles together as well. And Wimbledon. Yeah, yeah I got a couple of Wimbled uh, Grand Slam titles and doubles. But uh, but, you know, the uh, Mac, you know, there's no there's no secret. Mac and I had, you know, what I what I call a real rivalry. And, you know, not that other guys don't, but but we had the, the Lakers and the Celtics kind of rivalry and the Ali Frazier kind of rivalry that 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 was was uh, to the point of, you know, not only on the court, but, you know, also filtered off off the court. And I think that's what made it so uh, so intriguing to to not only to us when we played each other, but to the fans when we did play because they knew they were going to get great tennis. Anything more than that was going to be a bonus. And, uh, you know, hopefully we didn't disappoint them in any way. Is this generation rivalry too friendly? Do you wish that Nadal Federer or the Djokovic Nadal was a little bit more contentious? Well, I mean, it's not for me to say. I mean, uh, you know, they're the ones that are in the middle of it. Uh, but, but uh, you know, I, I'm, I, I just got to ask the question. I mean, do you ever think that, that Mac would ever come over and give me a hug after beating me in the finals of Wimbledon or the U.S. Open or vice versa? I kind of don't think so. Uh, you know, but, you know, that's that's the, you know, the feeling of the players today. You know, that's it's what it is. And, and that's that's the way they want to go about it. It's a it, it seems to be a friendlier rivalry, uh, you know, but things happen now in the game that that I didn't see happening back then. You know, they're going out and, and waving after after winning every match and, you know, to the crowd. Now, I know they want to wave to the crowd, but it's almost like the player themselves is shocked that they won the match, you know, that it might be their last match. I mean, you know, it was hard for me to see Bjorn going and, and doing that, you know, or, or Mac or Lindell, you know, because they expected to win, you know, and they expected to go to the next round. And, and but see, that's just me from the outside. See, now don't get me wrong here now. I'm not on the inside anymore and I'm not. But I mean, it just it, it just seems to be handled differently. Uh, than it was in the old days, and not that that's bad, because it is now, and this is that's what's hot now, and and that's what you're going to remember now, because that's what that's what you see on a on a tournament to tournament basis, but it's just uh, you know it seems that feelings are different, and and the way it's looked at is different than it was before. What player in other sports do you identify with or have a lot of respect for? I mean, you're an all sports guy. I am. I you know I, I'm a, a huge basketball fan. Uh, I love football. Um, you know, I played golf with Jordan and Gretzky and, and uh, you know, it was interesting to see, you know, their attitudes, you know, once they were away from their sport, how they handled, you know, uh, a sport. Basically, I'm from an individual sport and how they handled being on their own on the golf course. And and uh, uh, but but, uh, you know, I'm I'm for athletes that that I can look at and say that guy's given everything he has every time. You know, I don't I'm that guy now that sits back and doesn't want to be shortchanged. You know, that I, while I'm watching any athlete, as long as he's giving me his best, doesn't matter, win or lose. You know, I want to see his best. And if he's giving me that, I'm going to walk out of there feeling satisfied. So I've turned into the fan, you know, and not only the fan of sports, but the fan, especially a fan of tennis. And, and to, to see, you know, what they have to offer and, and want, you know, I'm that guy now that wants more, you know, so. And which athlete now gives that to you? In other sports? Well, let's see. I mean, you got to look at a, you know, and, and they got to look at a guy like uh, Peyton Manning, you know, I mean, to come back after his, in, his uh, injury to his neck and now, you know, he's, he's with another team and, you know, how he's going to handle that. And, but what he gave with the Indianapolis Colts leading up to that, you know, and, and uh, basketball, I mean, you look at, uh, you know, Kobe Bryant, you look at LeBron James, Dwayne Wade. I mean, I'm, you know, there's a lot of guys I'm going to leave out here, but you look at them on a on a game to game basis, because a number of years ago, it was uh, uh, 
a basketball player walked off and he says, uh, they said, what'd you think about the game tonight? And, and he said, he says, well, you know, I, I play, I play so many games. I said, I just, you know, just, just didn't get, just couldn't feel like giving it my best tonight. Now that's unacceptable to me, you know, so to, uh, to you know, to be a, to be a fan of uh, sports is what I am. You know, I, and, you know, I look at golf and, and, you know, watch a guy like Tiger Woods and what he's been through. And, and how he's handled it, right or wrong. You know, it's not, it's not me to say, but just how he handles it and how he's trying to get back and, and the struggles that he's going through. I mean, that's, that's what people on a day-to-day -day basis go through every day, you know, real life stuff, you know, and they're seeing, you know, a, a guy that's at the top of his sport and, and going through the same thing. That's the connection. There's a connection there. You know, a, a young Irish kid, Rory McIlroy, you know, coming over and all of a sudden taking it, taking it by storm. He's from Ireland, for Christ's sake. You know, how's this happen? You know, and, but it's, it's, it's life connecting stuff to where fans become fans. And that's why golf is, you know, where it is. And that's why tennis is where it is. They can identify with Rafa. They can identify with Djokovic. They can identify with Federer and Murray and, and, and the guys that are out there playing. That's why you got to bring them down with you. And you got to make them a big part of it because once you lose them, it's going to be hard to get them back. And that would be a shame if that would happen. Well, Jimmy, this is one of those conversations you just don't want to end. It's been so enjoyable spending time with you and, and really listening and learning from uh, one of my all-time idols and someone I respect so much on and off the court. So thank you so much. Thanks for everything you've done for tennis Justin. and uh, being unapologetic about it. And no, no. doing what you said is maximizing one's potential. That's the key to success. That's what success means.